Bada bing, bada boom, we else do it in the room. How you doing? So, I'm talking right now, we're going to talk about North American land claims. And notice, I didn't say Native American land claims, because they were the first Americans that were in the United States. So, very important that we talk about this. Let's go ahead and start off. Christopher Columbus was the first European to reach the New World. No. That would be the Vikings in the year 1000. So, 40,000 years ago, the Native Americans, well, they were Asians at the time, they came from the Bering Strait, uh, which was which was a land bridge that was formed by the Ice Age at the time. And so, well, that was before the Ice Age, but there was land there, and then they could make their way, they could migrate uh, east from Asia to North America across Alaska. And now we know that Alaska does not touch the United States. Alaska actually borders Canada, and it actually has a long peninsula that reaches in with several chains of islands that reach out into the Pacific Ocean, and that actually touches uh, Russia. Um, and so it, it actually is really close to Russia. So they came from Asia across Russia through the Bering Strait into North America. Let's get started. So in the year of 1000, Vikings settled in Newfoundland. Now remember that Newfoundland uh, name because it will come up a little bit later in our timeline because it's not the first time that uh, someone will land there. So Europeans thought at the time there was a beginning uh, understanding that there were a lot of riches to be had in Asia and in India and in uh, China and Asia and Japan and Sipangu and all these mythical places. Uh, they just thought that there were just, they've heard stories about Marco Polo and, and the, the stories that he told and they wanted some of that. I mean, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to be rich, uh, be very popular in their society uh, and be the talk of the town? So next, in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Well, that's good for you, Columbus, but that's not for the Native Americans. He had three main purposes for going to the new world, God, gold, and glory. And so the biggest thing that he was looking for, he was looking to exploit the riches of North America. Not good for Native Americans because he killed off over 90% of the Taino tribe that he came into contact with not necessarily directly his fault, but he was brutal. Uh, and he uh, forced the uh, children and the women and the, the men to do things that are just unspeakable. And the, he forced them to go find gold um, or else uh, he would inflict physical harm upon them. And so Columbus's uh, ventures into North America are often controversial because we still celebrate Columbus Day in many parts of the United States. Native Americans uh, take issue with this and say that we should celebrate Indigenous Peoples Day, which is a reflection and a remembrance and a memorial of Native Americans that lived in the area in North America. Moving on. So in 1497, the British became interested in the stories that were being told about this Christopher Columbus, this Admiral of the Sea, and the riches that he supposedly had. John Cabot landed in Newfoundland and he claimed it for the King of England. That was great because now England was now invested in the in North America. Well, this would be great news for the British as they would start establishing colonies and start they would start to establish 13 of them and that eventually became what I live in right now, which is the United States of America. So this is uh, John Cabot being in uh, North America. It may have to do with the reason why I'm speaking English right now because uh, he was really Giovanni Caboto. He was from Italy, uh, but you know he found a sponsor in England and because he sailed for England, the British were now heavily invested in North America and now, like I said, I'm speaking English to you thanks to him. In 1513, Juan Ponce de Leon sailed for f f uh, Spain and he discovered, discovered Florida. Now, the reason why I put quote, air quotes around discovered he didn't discover squat. Native Americans were here 40,000 years ago. Um, and the thing is, you can't discover something that's already been discovered, right? Right? So anyways, Juan Ponce de Leon was looking for the Fountain of Youth. One problem, Fountain of Youth isn't real, cat. He was looking for water that he could find from a magical spring and it would make him young forever. <coughs> no. Okay, 1513. Spanish again, ding, 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 Vasco Nunez de Baboa. Now, he was a little bit jealous of what Juan Ponce de Leon did, and he said, you know what, whatever you can do, I can do better. So what he did, he became the first European to dis discover, we all know what that means, discover the Pacific Ocean for the Europeans. Now, he may have been one of the first Europeans to uh, see the Pacific Ocean, but what he did after that would change the course of history. 
he claimed the land. He said when he planted his flag into the uh, sand, he said all land that touches the Pacific Ocean is now property of Spain. And so now Spain was gathering a rather large influence in North America. In 1524, the French now make their great introduction. Okay, and what we have, we have Giovanni de Veranzo. He explores the Atlantic coast of North America from Florida all the way to Newfoundland, and he claims it for France. So a large part of the area where he uh, went to, they're still speaking French to this day in uh, modern day Quebec and in that particular area. Um, and, and French is actually one of the national languages of Canada, thanks to the French influence there. In 1529, the Spanish, they come ringing again. What we have is Hernando de Soto. He became the first European to explore deeper into the United States. And he sailed from Florida to Arkansas, and he claims many of the, uh, the areas that he uh, visits for Spain. So the uh, Spanish, they're gathering a lot of territory in this time. Next, in 1634, what we have, or this is 1534, my apologies, Jacques Cartier sailed along the shores of the St. Lawrence River and he claimed the land for France, Jacques Cartier. And like I said, in the same area where Giovanni de Veranzo uh, ex ex explored, Jacques Cartier uh, added some of his own French influence. Uh, and, and to this day, we're, we're still seeing the effects of their explorations. Next up, so what we have, we have in 1598, the Spanish, again, they settle in the American Southwest. And, and I have actually been to the Southwest and there's a heavy Spanish influence to this day. Uh, it, Spanish uh, is actually one of the largest languages spoken uh, in the American Southwest, and it's because of the Spanish influence in that particular area. In 1607, you have the British again. Jamestown is established in Virginia, and it, became, it becomes the first British settlement in the New World. Now, there was a small settlement in Roanoke, uh, but no one really knows what happened. You had a captain who dropped off some people. They started to establish a colony. He went back to England to go pick up some su supplies. He comes back, and then the only thing that's uh, left is uh, a village that is pretty much burned down, uh, and then you have something etched into a tree, and no one really knows what it is to this day. 1610, the British come again. Henry Hudson explored the Hudson Bay region in New York. So Henry Hudson's the greatest explorer to never accomplish what he set out for. Uh, he discovered much of New York, and now uh, if you live in New York, you can be awful thankful for Henry Hudson. In 1732, uh, in Russia, Russia began establishing colonies in Alaska. And so if you remember, Alaska is very close to Russia, so that's a very close influence. And so they started establishing colonies in Russia, and the United States would eventually purchase uh, the territory of Alaska from Russia. In 1738, the French established trading with the Native Americans of the Great Plains region. And so because of Jacques Cartier and Giovanni de Veranzo, you had people uh, colonizing that area and they began uh, the fur trade and they began trading with Native Americans and they had a very peaceful relationship with Native Americans also. That was disrupted by the British and actually started the French and Indian War. Last but not least, in 1750, most of the land in North America had been claimed by European countries. So, this wraps up North American land claims and the timeline that goes along with it. Boom.